Hey everybody, Dave, Display Fireworks 1. I'm doing something a little different in this video. It's about a 2015 Chevy Silverado. I picked up a new vehicle. I'll talk about that later. Uh, this is an inner fender liner for this vehicle. Now I want to show you something on all these Silverado trucks that's like a common problem. And I really didn't pay much attention to it until after I bought the vehicle. Um, the back fender area is missing this device right here. This is an original GM piece. Now when I went to do this project, I looked on the internet for a video and I didn't see one. So I said, you know what, I'm going to make my own video for the next guy to find. Now when you go to search this on YouTube, you're going to see a company called Husky that sells that. This is not that device. And this is the original GM one. And if I do this video right, it's probably going to make that Husky guy mad because I think this is the way to go. Now we'll follow along, I'm going to show you everything you need to do this, the GM parts, piece numbers, tools, everything. You're, I've never done this before, but I think we're going to do it together, and you're going to do it Okay, too. here's the, the common th issue everyone's trying to solve with these vehicles. This is a Silverado. Even if you don't own this vehicle, when you go to ride around on the highways and you see this vehicle, you'll see this back inner um, wheel well is, is exposed. You know, but, you know, whether it'll eventually rust or not, I don't know. Now, if you look in the front, it's covered with this device I'm going to install on the back. Now, from what I'm seeing, usually only the higher-end uh, Silverado models have that area covered. And, you know, I'm thinking, geez, for a little bit of money, I can get this job done. Now, um, we're going to cut to another scene. I'm going to show you all the parts and pieces that I'm using to do this. They're uh, GM parts and um, part numbers, etc., and a few of the prices. And when we come back, hopefully we'll have this thing jacked up in the air a little bit and the wheel off. Okay, we're going to go into some extensive detail so that if you want this job done and you want to do it, I'm going to show you everything you need to know. I've, I've never undertaken this. This is my research leading me to this, and I decided to make a video. There's just too many of these exposed fenders that I'm noticing on this truck, and I think we could solve it pretty easily. All right, I'm talking about 2015 Silverado 8-foot bed. Now, I think if you have any single-wheel truck from this uh, 214 up, I think this may work. I'm not 100%. You could always cross-reference these numbers. This is everything you're going to need to know. This is the original GM liners. So when you go to a, a Chevy dealer, you can give them this, break these numbers down. I forget which one's left or right side, but if you notice, the last digit goes from 7 to 8. Wheelhouse liner, I just scribbled this. It lists at $64 each. Now, you know, a lot of times they'll give you a little break on the price. The aftermarket one I looked at was actually around this price right here. And um, I was reading complaints that it doesn't fit properly. And I'm thinking, well, why would I want to do that if I could go with the original? Here comes the tricky part, or expensive part. Now, if you buy these two pieces from a GM dealer, this is going to cost you $5 each, $250 and $250 for these two pieces, which I thought was extremely high. I referenced them on eBay. And you could buy them a whole bunch cheaper. I think uh, I got the whole complete screw kit. So instead of the, forget, it was like how many on each end, it was about $100 for the screws and nuts, which I thought was ridiculous. And that was with a little break on the price. I purchased both of these for around a $30 figure. This is the screw number, and this is the nut number. Now, it looks kind of weird, but once we get into the job, I think you'll see how all this works. Now, um, here's the thing that I'm, like I said, I've never done this job, but I'm kind of, you know, using my brain here a little bit. If you look how this is, you're thinking, geez, and I thought the same thing. That screw in this hole can only go down to here, and then it hits. I'm going to guess, like, once this is in position, try to get a focus here. Um, it will expose those open, push those two devices open, and hold it even more in place. And you'll see on the truck where these fit in. The screw, you're going to need 
it's called a Torx wrench to or screwdriver. This is the original factory. They're, these are identical. They're probably made out of a material that won't rust. You can buy a device like this at Advanced Auto or whatever auto store or somewhere near you. And this is what the end of it looks like. These are kind of a tamper resistant thing. And that's it. So when you see me using these in the part of the video, you're going to know. Just write all this down right here. I'll hold it here for a second. Punch this in eBay. It'll pop right up. Take these two to a uh, GM dealer. You can buy these online, but it was like an oversized shipping item. So this price dropped down a little bit, but the cost of shipping was like $55, $60. Best to go to a GM dealer. Buy these two. Buy these two on the Internet. All right, let's look at the project. Okay, let's take a look inside the fender. My guess is your inner fender is going to look exactly uh, like this. Uh, this truck came with these um, splash guards here, uh, one in the front and one in the back. Now just doing some looking at the template on that uh, piece, I believe I have to remove these. And remember, we're going to need that tool that I showed you in uh, the prior clip of this. Now if you look, see these devices right here? The thing I didn't like about the um, the Husky ones when I looked at it, they were real ambiguous about how exactly it fit and in these little holes and whatever. And, you know, I read some of the reviews and they said um, a lot of guys complained it didn't fit properly. And the more I was thinking, you know, why would I want to do that with, you know, my experience has been with the, any aftermarket part, it never fits as well as the original factory one. Um, now, the device, those little nuts that I showed you screw in, or just pop into these holes, I believe. Like I said, we're, I'm going to go through the learning curve. See this? I'm going to bet if I take those out, there's, um, yep, there's one of those same holes right there. Put it back in now, or no, I'll just leave it out. So what we're going to do is uh, pop those uh, nuts in there, and they'll probably stay in those holes. And then we'll just line up the uh, inner fender. I cleaned a little bit in here uh, before I uh, I'm going to do this. So this is where we're at. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one on without being on camera. I've never done this. I'm going to go through the learning curve, and when I do the second one, we'll cover it in detail. So now you know the parts and pieces, uh, the numbers and everything, the tools, and some of what goes on here. And let me put one on, and then I'll video this end. So I'll see you when that one's done. Okay, I have one side done. Remember, this is the side I'm learning on, and I'm going to show you on the uh, second side a little more detail. Uh, don't try to do it with the wheel on, okay? Take the wheel off, get the car up in the air a little bit. Uh, with, with this, um, you know, inboard rain flap or whatever the hell it's called, you know, I thought it would go over top of the uh, this uh, felt device, but it doesn't. It has to go under it because there's a little notch in this plastic that inserts into the fender to hold it in position. So this is the proper way, as far as I can tell, to do it. Now look how many screws are in. Why would you even think about buying an aftermarket one? This is what I don't get, right? Here, here, here. Now, now once I show you how to do this, you'll see I don't know if I can get up under here or there. Let's look. It's kind of difficult. There's three, three up top. And it's probably going to be hard to show you. Uh, there, it fits right into the fender. It, it's just like perfect fit once you know how to do this. And we're going to cover that in the next one. Now, once I show you this on these Silverados, and you, you ride down the highway, you're going to see it. So many of these are exposed, right? This device in here, I guess, is only for the 
top of the line Silverados. So now I'll be looking all Denali and shit, right, with this on here. All right, top of the line stuff. Okay, um, let's work on the next one. Put the wheel back on and move over. The only thing I regret was that damn uh, wrench uh, I showed you. I have these Torx um, uh, sockets. You know, I worked on my daughter's car. And there was something on her, and I bought the larger ones. I'm like, I don't need those small ones. You could bet when I leave to go to the tool store next time, I'm going to buy a whole set of these. Because it would certainly make uh, this job a whole bunch easier than twisting that wrench around it that I showed you. The nice thing is that one I showed you is certainly cheap and convenient. All right, we'll start a little more from the ground up on the next side. Let me put okay, the we're on the other side of the vehicle. Now, this is the part where I'm going to go into some more detail. Um, so forgive me if I go into too much detail, but I always try to keep in mind the new person. Now, normally I make fireworks videos, so if you're a subscriber to my videos, and you're still hanging on there, I appreciate it, but it's just something I felt the need to do. I mean, just think if everyone had a video about how to do something, we could all look it up and be pretty knowledgeable, right? Now, let me see if I can get a close-up of this. If you remember those clamps, or the nut part I showed you, let's see if that shows up on this mud flap here. Ah, darn it, yeah, it's showing up. See how it stretches out when the screw goes into it? It's kind of designed to do that and hold on a little more than it would if it was just sitting in there. Now, there's 13 screws on this. Um, it's actually called a wheelhouse liner. You know, everybody calls it the inner fender liner. Now, what you need to do is look at the, the holes that are already in that thing, and you just kind of match it up to where it needs to be here. So, you know, from doing the other side, now, you, you know, when you look here, you'll say, geez, uh, you know, on the template, there should be a screw here. All you do is pop this out, see, and then there it is. You're looking for these square devices as you're, as you're going through. And I can't get, I if I can get the camera under here, let's see, oh, under this fender, it's kind of difficult. Now, when you peel this off, see, I already took one off here. There's a hole there. Hole here, it's going to be 13 total. If you already have this device on, it's going to need to come off. And when, when it comes off, I'm going to show you, if I can here, why the liner um, can't go um, behind it. It has to go in front of it because there's some notch in here I'll have to show you. And uh, let me take this off and maybe I'll show you how it goes back on. Here's the, here's, the, here's the thing that's slowing me down is this damn tool, to be honest. Um, I, I, like I said, when I leave here, I'm going to go get uh, something. Maybe one day after I complete this video, I'll have to tell you the story about me purchasing this truck. I had a 2003 Silverado. I just loved the hell out of that thing, you know? And uh, it just was getting up in miles and the brake lines rotted and it was throwing all these uh, check engine light codes, catalytic converter, etc. It just hit the point where I had to pick another one up. Uh, this truck actually has a 4.3 engine and that's the same engine that was in my 2003 and I said to myself I need a V8, you know, because I mean that 2003 just it was a standard shift it just didn't have a lot of power when I took this 4.3 engine for a ride, I can't believe that it's the same engine. It's like unbelievable, you know, what they did, I don't know what they did, but with, probably with computers and adjusted valve timing, the, this thing could go over 100 mile an hour without an issue. It's, it's, it's unbelievably powerful in like 20, 21 miles to the gallon on, on the truck. Now this is the one that's tough. See, this is where I wish I had my, uh, my other, uh, you know, had a set of sockets. This was one of the toughest ones. So let me, let me spare you the agony of me taking this off. Okay, and this, right this piece is loose. It pops, comes right out. See, there's a little, uh, a little notch there. That the reason you can't put that felt piece behind it, because that notch has to go 
in that hole right there. I'll clean this up a little bit. I don't think it'll matter much. So, just so you see how that goes. And you can see those clamps that we're going to be installing are already in place here. Okay. Okay, I'm going to show you how to put one of these in. And then you'll know how to put them all in. You're going to reference the holes in the device and where they line up here. And if there's a rubber piece in the way, you, 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 you pull that rubber piece out and underneath it is a square hole. Now, these are uh, the uh, devices we started at the beginning of the video. And, you know, I have the numbers how to purchase. So you just come up to this and you'll hear it snap right in. That's it. It's in. Okay, now you go through, find every single one of them and snap it in and be sure you did them all before you put that black uh, liner in here because once it's in, you, you can't get behind it again. So I'm going to go through and pop all of them in to all these holes. There's 13 holes in that uh, wheelhouse liner. And they all should match up here just like they did the other side. So I hope you got that part. Okay, let's take a look at the liner. See the holes as you go around here. Watch that one in the corner. And then you just go. And be sure you got them all. You snap that in. Snap it here, here. And there should be three on the top. There they are, one here, and then all this mess right here. Okay, the next move is, I'm going to put the liner in. I'm sure I got them all. One here, one here. All right, let me, uh, I can't do both and hold the camera. The liner just slips right in, so let me just set it down and come back after I do that. Okay, right now the liner is just kind of sitting in position. See, uh, <clears throat> once you put the liner in, then you can put this um, little rain flap here up under it and push it in, and then we'll put the screws in. It, it's actually basically, see right here, you just give it a little push up in. Up under, I, no, I can't do both. I need two hands. I'm just going to be sure air it goes. It, it, it's right up under. Perfect fit. And once I push it up, you'll see where these holes will line up. Now, what I usually do is, well, and I did it on the other one, put all the, all, you know, don't put one screw in and tighten it. Put all the screws in, and this is a good, before you, just turn them in a couple, you know, notches. See, I never even had to move this, or take this off at all, it goes behind. By putting all the screws in, and just kind of hand snugging them, you'll know whether you forgot to put one of those little devices behind there or not, and it'll help you line the whole thing up, and then finally go back and tighten the whole thing. So let me... Uh, get it started. I'll probably start with these top ones and snug nose uh, two and then work down from, uh, actually there's three and then work down from there. Okay, let me come back. Okay, this side is put together. In all honesty, that tool I showed you at the beginning makes this job very difficult. It is a lot of twisting and turning. If I had the right Torx uh, socket screwdriver, I could just zip right through this, there's no doubt. I'm definitely going to buy a set of those in the small size. I have the large. Now there it is. I'll pull it out. We'll take a little better look at it. Why? How in the hell that guy at that Husky place is selling the the uh, aftermarket ones? I don't know because for basically the same price. Look at this. I mean, you could put a custom GM, 13 screws holding it in, sturdy, solid, good looking. This material, I think, is going to, the plastic one has got to be loud in the rain with the rain from the wheel hitting it. This is probably going to dampen it a little bit, the sound, and make the, the truck's already quiet. It's a work truck, uh, single cab. These, these single cabs are like impossible to find sometimes. Uh, the guy told me they usually make all the $50,000 trucks first, and then they start making the cheaper ones. And uh, I'll give you a quick look at the inside of it. 
and uh, we'll put the wheel on and take a look at the what it looks like after the job's done. Okay, it, it, see this you is then. funny. Look what happened to the tool. This happened part way through the the job, just putting the stress on it. Here's the thing that kills me, and I said, oh, I'll just tighten it up. You need a damn torch wrench to tighten the thing up, and how am I going to take one of these out and tighten it at the same time? You know? Oh, well. That's it. My advice, go out and get a good set uh, if you want, because, I mean, this will get you through the job. There's no doubt. It just made it a little more time consuming. It's, I'm definitely going to go out and buy a set, a little smaller set. I didn't think I would ever need it, but I definitely do. Um, let me pull it out and let's take a look at the truck. Okay, there it is. It's on. All covered up. I think it looks kind of cleaner. Got all that white showing. Yeah, def definitely, definitely. A lot nicer. Okay. Clear. I'll give you a quick look on the inside. It's a basic work truck, but it has a few extra little features. Power windows, this sort of thing. Tough to find a regular cab truck for sure. Okay, there it is. Now you know what to do to put one of these liners in, clean your truck up a little bit. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, probably the next video will be about fireworks. Okay, see ya.